to debate the best pound-for-pound -pound boxer of all time. It's an argument that will certainly fill uh, debating chambers. Who they fought, that's what I consider is the best fighter. Who's handled the best fighters of his time, not ducked and dived his way through. I am the greatest. I said that even before I knew I was. He was, in fact, the greatest. Am I wrong for saying that I'm the best? Who was the best of all time? He can't whoop Marvelous Marvin Hagler. That's it. Nobody can whoop me. <laughs> I'm the best. You get the best of the best right now, and you go, wow, they've learned from Ali and Sugar Ray Leonard and Roy Jones. But and the greatest ever? Remember from the side. One writer called him a combination of Madison Avenue, Main Street, and Marvel Comics. The championship belt of gold and silk is paraded for all to see. Symbol of every heavyweight king, from John L. to Willard himself. Yes, it, it is very difficult, obviously, to span a century and come up with the best pound for pound. Hands of steel and hands of stone. The name of the game is to hit and not get hit. Damn, right yeah. about Mike Tyson in his prime. Uh -huh. There was nobody more menacing in boxing history than George Foreman. He is always was in condition. He had no off nights. I must be the greatest! That's why he won every fight. And now he's, you know, literally embracing the whole idea of him being in the Matrix. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland. I know Kung Fu. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. He is the next one, Ali. Show me. Just in the last year, every boxing gym I've gone to, people have taught Lomachenko's moves. You're faster than this. Like, in particular, that little hop step. Take that angle! Meaning that he's changing the game. What a dominating performance here! He is the one. Put it in a historic perspective, Bert. Oh. He was a southpaw, that gives him an edge right there, and he knew how to use it. He was a slick southpaw. But when he had to fight you, he could fight you too. Cornell would have been something special. That may do it, and that will do it. You have to love defensive fighters. This guy was a defensive wizard. The old timers used to say, stand right in front of you, you couldn't hit him in the backside yeah. with a handful of buck shot. He could go inside, he could go outside, you know, he could use his legs a little bit. became one of boxing's most exciting fighters. Honorable mention. When I was vago, when I was jefe de pandilla, and I was with a puñal, and this is with facts, not with lies. I don't walk like Muñega, like Oscar. Ni te dio la falta de mi mamá. Tonight, he is the challenger, the former junior lightweight, former junior welterweight, former two-time welterweight, former two-time super welterweight. Former WBO middleweight champion of the world, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. I think there could be instantaneous fireworks here. Oscar is not dancing. Big oh. stop by De La Hoya. He caught him. No sabes ni representar tu raza, m por eso. Mira a todos los latinos que están conmigo. Historian. 
Tú le faltaste respeto a dos cosas que yo amo. Dos cosas. Ayer dijiste algo de mi esposa y ahora mencionaste a mi raza. Y con eso no se juega. Y te voy a noquear. Mayo 6 te voy a noquear. He's a gentle human being outside of the ring, he's soft-spoken. He's the kind of guy who would back in Greece, he'd have a sword in his hand and be out in the sawdust coming at you, you know, and you wouldn't want to see that. And there's a sneaky uppercut from Holofield. He wants to get in there with you, but... And, and get close, he doesn't want any fooling around. As a pro, Holyfield's rise was swift. Oh, a straight right hand on He's been called the greatest... Weston was a virtually invisible... Just a dreadnought of a, of a fighter. And Lister was a great fighter. I seen him knock out a guy's teeth one night. It's the truth. There's no baloney. Hit him so hard, he dislodged the mouthpiece and the teeth went with the mouthpiece. And he had this very forbidding and intimidating, utterly hostile manner about it. He was so powerful. I was a god. When he jabbed you, it was the same as punching somebody. Fought like an avenging angel of death. Beat everyone with a left hook from hell. Now, Jess Willard is a man now, six, six and a half. A long-armed, slope-shouldered predator bashed heads. There's that big left. Billy goes down, his jaw broken in seven days. When Dempsey retired, they retired the title champ. Nobody's strong enough to tie him up for long. He's trying to hit him. It's like trying to hit a sunbeam that moves away. Joe Lewis, the greatest boxer ever lived. The devastating Joe Lewis of old. Now, in slow motion, here is the champion in all his fighting fury. Now that was a great boxer! Uh, let's get this party started! Ten. He was the most macho fighter in boxing. Those demonic, black, cold eyes. His evil-looking, menacing eyes. In 1980, Bob Arum and Don King joined forces to create a mega event. Sugar versus Stone. He seen Sugar Ray Leonard's wife at a press conference. He flipped her off and yelled, whore. The kind of heat that starts it up real fast is the hatred that they feel for each other. 134 and a half pounds. What Duran weighs for this title I was event. in awe of the whole event. I mean, the huge cameras and all reporters from around the world. Uh, it was just too big. I mean, I lost perspective. The ran punches were just like... Send the blocks, man. wants to beat Duran at Duran's kind of fight. I tell you one thing, it is an even fight, and it's so subjective. Press, even the press is up on its feet. Nine. I had annihilated everyone that stepped in the ring with him. I had beaten everybody that Muhammad Ali had lost to. the challenger for the heavyweight title, Big George Foreman, the undefeated heavyweight. I must break you. So I thought I was the toughest thing ever invented. And George was a big, strong, young, impervious to pain heavyweight. If he put you, you know, if he put you six feet deep, ultimately, George Foreman didn't have a problem with that. He was that vicious. One punch of mine was, was equal to 20 of any other heavyweight. 
Whatever he hits, he destroys. Down goes Frazier! Down goes Frazier! Down goes Frazier! I got Joe Frazier, who had dropped Muhammad Ali. The most menacing heavyweight of all time. He, it would be George Foreman. I was going to be the best heavyweight that ever existed. That he is with Ken Norton, and the reason for that, of course, is that he doesn't like George Foreman one bit. Do you really believe, Ali, that he yeah, can beat man. this man? Yeah, man. Yeah, the man went 24 rounds with me, broke my jaw in the first round. I was in shape to sack him fight. In those days, he was a bully. The people around him were afraid of him. Foreman had really brutalized the people who trained him, and they were terrified of him. Even the hell he gave me, as fast as I am, as accurate as I am, I couldn't whoop Ken Norton. I had beaten the best in Joe Frazier. No doubt about it, I had beaten the best. People had something to say about that. I said, you know what? I'm gonna kill one of these fellows. Then they'll shut up. And it looks like Norton has really been staggered. Foreman was a guy who destroyed Frazier, destroyed Kenny Norton. Whipped by Kenny Norton, I knocked Kenny Norton out easily. George Foreman, Days after Michael Mora beat Evander Holyfield, and I got a call from George. And I said, George, you can't kid me. You want to fight Michael Moore. And he said more than anything else in the world. Many still doubted whether at age 45, Foreman could recapture the title taking on a 26-year-old heavyweight champion. There are a lot of skeptics out there who think that George now is more King Khan than King Khan. Left and a right inside by Moore. Sizzling. George hasn't earned this championship shot. Just a guy. Our spawn partners were better. I told you! I told you! I'm the champion of the world! Maybe what he's after is the image of immortality that Ali gained in Zaire 20 years ago. If you think you've seen Foreman shorts before, they are the same trunks that he wore in the ring against Muhammad Ali. Changed. When I was a kid growing up in Boston, Hagler was the middleweight champion of the world. And I used to see, they used to have video of him running with a hoodie on, running, screaming, war, war! Crazy, right? Oh, it was amazing. Marvin Hagler made you want to just get out of your house and go running in the snow. Oh, that had left. so disciplined that was the thing that i always got out of watching him wasn't that he was so wild he was so mentally strong he had an iron chin and his discipline was um, impeccable nothing distracts him from his purpose he trains with a rare single-mindedness determined to build his body and mind he was a ferocious Machine. animal right through the body yeah oh he was chiseled he was a machine come on he is hurt he's got him in trouble So I don't listen to that kind of talk. I don't run around with a bunch of entourage people who's patting me on the back, telling me how great I am. I have all the confidence in myself. Byron has two belts, WBC belt, WBA belt. Now he's going to get the United States Boxing Association International ring. Former 
middleweight world champion, former super middleweight world champion, three-time light heavyweight world champion, and former heavyweight champion of the world, future Hall of Fame legend, Roy Jones. It is all over. Randy Newman stopping the bout and the final minute. 13 years of age. Was your life, for want of a better word, almost what? miserable? Yes. One senses in reading this article that the bulk of uh, your young life was spent in the following manner. Trying to do something. Trying to do anything that would win the approval of your father, Big Roy. He had not even broken a sweat coming into this opening round. That's very correct. It was totally miserable. Did that leave you with uh, a certain killer instinct, a certain rage? That now manifests itself when you step into a boxing ring? This is over! Roy Jones Jr. goes to 16 and 0 with 16 knockouts with the big left hook. Okay, now let's go to the biggest punch you ever delivered. Who was it? It was a guy named Art Sawano. Art Sawano. Yes, it was in uh, Reno, Nevada. Oh boy. Boom! Yeah, it was. Holy! Oh my! Oh. Big right hand. Is his head still attached? Yeah, yeah look at his ass. Oh my God! He had a seizure. That will, that will finish it. Shades of the Jorge Baca fight for Roy Jones, his second straight first round KO. All right, we just want to take a look at the end of the fight, Roy. You describe it. Once upon a time, the man next to me, Roy Jones Jr., was universally considered the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Now, it's got to be difficult to focus on this fight in the same manner in which you focused on James Tony and made Tony look absolutely pathetic in winning by decision. Big right hand by Roy Jones! Another right hand! Another right hand by Roy Jones! And down goes Bird! Down goes Bird! Him out in one round. The uh, fight against Vinny Pazienza. All right, all right. Vinny threw a lot of punches at him. I think like over 60 punches, and for the first time in boxing history, didn't land a punch. That's an astonishing wow. statistic. <laughs> champion in multiple divisions, 49 and 0. Am I wrong for saying that I'm the best? He ultimately changed his name from pretty, his nickname from Pretty Boy to Money. And he marketed himself as somebody who so disgusted you with his flossing and beyond. Mayweather reportedly bought this car for $4.8 million. That you didn't pay necessarily to see him convinced you to pay to watch somebody else try to beat him up. You need people like me so you can point your f and say, that's the bad guy. You go with two right hands. He's got like 30 watches with him, but can you do it from the beginning? If I want to bring out the one and only, then I bring out the watch that costs 18 million. 18 million dollars <laughs> on your wrist? That's insane. And at the end of the day, he ended up undefeated in 49 fights. That's it. I don't think Roy's worried about his punches anymore. The stereotype is that all rich people have a private jet, and Floyd Mayweather is no exception. Oh, oh my man. God. That's so preposterous. December 2007, another Mayweather super fight, this time against Ricky Hatton. I think of him as the Nightcrawler. Like, you know, he's just teleporting around you. Nightcrawler just, from X-Men? Yeah, X-Men. <laughs> He's just yeah. showing, he just like shows up suddenly right next yeah. to you, right? Oh, it's he disappears and shows up right next to you. Oh. Oh. 
check left hook. Oh, right into it. Good. You never saw it. Only been like hit solid, maybe seven, eight times saw, his whole career. I saw career. Him once when he got a little rocked by Shane, Shane Mosley. Yeah. yeah. There's a hard right hand, and that may be the hardest punch that Floyd Mayweather has taken in recent years. Mosley's loosening up. The crowd is coming alive, and we've got to fight for a moment here. Mosley, Mosley, Mosley. Knees buckled on the second right hand. And Mayweather may suddenly be two rounds down on the scorecard. There was a little grin on Mayweather's face between rounds. It looked almost like a look of embarrassment. He's the greatest great of all time. Meaning, like, yeah. I think he's better at boxing than Stephen Hawking is at, at uh, astrophysics. Harold, how do you have it presented? Look at you. 58, 56, four rounds to two. Floyd Mayweather. Jim, I tell you, he gets off first, he blinds you with that left jab, and then he puts that straight right hand in there like an arrow. And watching him take away your life. Yeah. Like, I like to see him take away a fighter's confidence. Floyd Mayweather's skill level, Floyd Mayweather's conditioning, Floyd Mayweather's application to the sport is at this moment unique. And he stands alone. It must be a little different fighting for your parents' survival than it is just fighting for yourself. My family was really down and out, and I felt it was my obligation to really help them out. By 1980, the boxing world had two welterweight title holders, Thomas the Hitman Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard. Tyler Hearns, uh, he was 6'3", 6'4", some say 6'5". I mean, he's tall, no question about it, long arms. Uh, speed and power. Thomas Hearns remained Leonard's last barrier to greatness. That fight was the most important fight of my professional boxing career. Tommy was the best, and I had to prove that I was the best by beating him. And uh, most people thought, even my brother Roger thought I was going to lose the fight. Good evening, and a very warm welcome to International Sports Special, which highlights a significant milestone in the history of boxing, the richest fight ever staged, Sugar Ray Leonard versus Tommy Hearns for the undisputed welterweight championship of the world. No fight since the Ali Frazier confrontation 10 years ago has created such a furore there. Now, it's going to be the richest fight in boxing history. So, the WBC welterweight champion Sugar Ray Leonard has entered the ring. Okay. First time we have ever seen Thomas in trouble. At this point, the conditioning of Sugar Ray Leonard has to be a his punch, Bertie. And he carried it into the 13th round, 12th round, 14th round. The three rounds remaining, Leonard's legacy was on the line. You're blowing it now, son. You're blowing it. My eye was like a slit. I had no peripheral vision. You're blowing it now. Rocky Marciano had something that you can't teach people. He Which is just brutal brute power. strength. Marciano misses the left hook. Connects with a smashing right. Another right. As he racks up his 45th consecutive triumph and his 40th knockout. Rocky Marciano, the greatest champion in the history of boxing. Every time I start talking about boxing, a white man got to pull Rocky Marciano out there. A legend his own time. Down he goes. He was 
the only undefeated retired champion in any division. And his record was unsurpassed. 49 victories in 49 fights. 43 of them by knockouts. Seven rounds to five. Rocky Marciano has to knock out Jersey Joe Walcott to win this fight, and his corner has told him so. He's down! He's down! Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and out! New heavyweight champion of the world, Rocky Marciano. One, two, three. Ah, ah, ah. Took us to the gym and pointed to a young boy who was hitting the heavy bag very ferociously and said, that's Mike Tyson. Not only is he here, but he will undoubtedly go on to become the youngest heavyweight champion in history. Look at the size of him. He looks like the Incredible Hulk. He really does. I'm glad I'm not Michael Jack Johnson. Look at a guy like Mike Tyson in his prime. I mean, he was the epitome of dedication. He looked unstoppable. He looked like a different planet of ability. I'll tell you, Michael Jack Johnson earned his money the hard way tonight. Well, there's not much to say about that knockout except to watch. But he was far more than a big puncher. He's a very good boxer. This will be a win to let everybody know that Donnie Long is back. One of those fresh youngsters only 19 years of age. That's it. it. Wow. The left hand puts him down. He collapses, and this one is over as the doctors rush into the ring. Forget what the, the press releases say. He's only five foot ten. Some would have you believe he's six foot. He is not a big heavyweight. He's only a kid. He had this outer body that could really fool you into forgetting that he was still a kid who had to develop. Left hook. Good night. What a great shot. Okay, look at the stats. Ten fights. Ten wins. Every, every fight is a 30-second assault. Those 80s fights with Tyson where he would just show up and look at people and they would melt. If you blink in the first round, you'll probably miss a Mike Tyson fight. And down goes Mark Young. The crowd chanting the next heavyweight champion, Mike Tyson. You definitely are going to hear more about him. And the next thing you know, Mike Tyson was like the hottest up-and-coming fighter. Mike has an ability to slip punches that has not been seen in the heavy rate ranks since Muhammad Ali. And down. He went out there and f***ed everybody up in the first round. It's the way he ran through the division. He changed the whole thing. thing. A double right hand to the body and the chin. Down goes Lorenzo Ball. But here, the spotlight falls most directly on 20-year-old Mike Tyson, whose public appeal grows every time he fights. He was a special force. The most scariest but... fighter on earth. A terrific uppercut. Black shoes, no socks, black trunks. This heavy metal sound that you hear is Mike Tyson about to make his way in, I believe. The sound is deafening here in the arena, so I won't try to yell over it. All I can say is... The heavyweight champion is about to make his appearance in the ring. Everything that Tyson does is intimidating. There he is. He comes out. He doesn't wear a coat in. He's worked up a full sweat. I want to tell you, the electricity in this crowd is now, awesome. 
Ladies and gentlemen, once and for all, let's get ready to rumble! Who's my favorite part coming up right now? It's all over! Fight Mason has won it! Makes almost no back throw! A dramatic first round knockout for Mike Tyson! Unbelievable strike! It came in the first round! My style is impetuous, my defense is impregnable, and I'm just ferocious. I want your heart, I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah! Two. Pow, pow, pow! Took away rounds of the greatest fighter ever lived. For 25 years, he had it all. But this is to be the last time he will walk down the aisle to get into the ring in boxing trunks and robe. More than the greatest boxer of all time, he was the idol whose every move in and out of the ring showed what black pride really meant. Smacking right hand landed by Sugar Ray Robinson. Ray Robinson becomes the new welterweight champion of the world. To date, Sugar Ray has had 112 professional fights. He has won 111. Well, there it is. One of the greatest fighters of all time, likely the greatest fighter of all time, and one of the greatest punches of all time. God, I believe that I was blessed with a talent. That the talent that I had for fighting was not of my own. I believe it was a God-given talent. Pound for pound, the best boxer ever to enter the ring. The International Boxing Club has finally put together the match that the American public has been seeing through its crystal ball for many years. A so-called dream match. But in his sadness, he might reflect that he was beaten by a man who has lost only twice in 136 fights in a brilliant career, called by many over and over again, the finest fighting machine of our time, pound for pound, Sugar Ray Robinson, middleweight champion of the world. Wow. This is the legend of Cassius Clay, the most beautiful fighter in the world today. What should people tell their kids who Muhammad Ali was? Play it lightning fast. He was a tremendous bolt of lightning. I am the greatest. Muhammad Ali struck us in the middle of America's darkest night, in the heart of its most threatening gathering storm. Cassius Clay, you gotta remember, is the greatest fighter that ever lived in and out of the ring. This will unquestionably be the toughest fighter that Clay has been in with so far. Boom. Created by Mother Nature out of thin air. A fantastic combination of power and beauty. It had to be somebody who was whistling past the graveyard, somebody who had to be scared, who was trying to you know, keep his courage up before he was destroyed. I felt that Sonny Liston was going in and squash this uh, boastful, braggardly kid like an ant. All set now. World heavyweight boxing title on the line. Just the anticipation of my father thinking that Ali was going to get killed literally by Sonny Liston because that is what people thought. The real drama around this fight was whether this hysterical man child was going to lose his nerve, whether he was going to show up, and whether he was going to get killed. Very slippery. Greatest of all time, greatest athlete, ambassador, human being of all time. The challenger is jabbing all. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Look at the guy yawning. Tell us what you think at the end of one. You look at the videos, or there's documentaries, there's movies, and it's hard to sum him up because you could do documentaries on different parts of his life. Scotty Lobo! Scotty Lobo! Marcus has him hurt! Sonny has a big mouth below his left eye. And he just hits with all the punches in the book. So 
I get him down, I get the sponge, and I pour the water into his eyes, trying to cleanse whatever's there. Before I did that, put my picky in his eye, and I put it into my eye. He burned like hell. There was something caustic in both eyes. Joe Polino had used Monsell solution on that cut, and my kid, sweating profusely, went into both eyes. What the heck, let's face it, biggest fight of his life, and he's blind, he can't see. Joe's eyes, his eyes are bothering him. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't know exactly what happened. They're yelling from Cassius Clay's corner. Something got in his right eye. Because Ali at 199 pounds was just not a, a full body heavyweight at that point. Well, Sonny Liston was probably 220. Oh, the ball. Cassius is a bit hurt. Sonny Liston put a horrible licking on him in that round. The lesser guy would have folded. But then his eyes started clear. He started doing a number on listening again. Oh. Easy target. Cassius. Awkwardly fast. Good long left lead. In the sixth round when Lister went back to his corner. Lister was a beaten man. What do you think is going on in Sonny's mind at this point? Well, I think that they feel now that, that they have all the stuff that he needs and go home to beat the beat out of Sonny. Cassius Clay. <laughs> peripheral vision, sharp, he's looking over my shoulder, he's looking over my shoulder, <laughs> he got up, we win. Johnny Liston is not going out! Johnny Liston is not going out! He's out! The winner and the new heavyweight champion of the world is catching play by ongoing... And in 1964, he became heavyweight champion of the world, upsetting Sonny Liston, the 7-1 to favorite. Electrified, and there he was, right in front of me, and a whole bunch of other newspaper men pointing down to us like this. I told you, I told you, I told you exactly what I was going to do. And no, nobody, even the big uh, sports writers, they, they were in awe over what he had done. Yeah, I feel yeah. great. I don't have a mark on my face. Yeah. And I upset Sonny Liston, and I just turned 22 years old. I must be the greatest. Everybody was scared but Muhammad Ali himself. And Ali is getting the people. Have you fought many guys who were talkers in the ring? No, I never get a chance to talk much. <laughs> <laughs> By the time you get to know a fella, it's all over. As for the fight itself, discussion centered not on who would win, but on how much punishment Foreman would dish out. The time may have come to say goodbye to Muhammad Ali. And now we understand that George Foreman is about to make his way to the ring. Because very honestly, I don't think he can beat George Foreman. Cosell was convinced that Ali is washed up. This guy was the closest thing to a human monster I, I'd ever seen before. He was certainly the scariest boxer. Look at this now as they stare. Muhammad Ali beginning to talk to George Foreman. They're really putting the stare on each other. I looked him in the eye to stare him down and said, Oh, George, you were in school when I was beating Sonny Liston. Gone in the past four years beyond two rounds in any fight. He knew that the one weakness in, in this monster who was thought of as unbeatable was his stamina. The first round, all of us yelled out, get off the ropes. And he would just say, shut up, I know how to do it. Well, I would say that the, the round was very even for that scene. And Ali totally got into the guy's head, and he didn't even realize it. It was... Muhammad Ali's fertile mind that created the rope. Here we go, round number two. The determined Ali get off his stool in between rounds. George Foreman sat down all the way. Ali leans on the rope. With the vicinity of starting it. Starting second or third round, when he went to the ropes, he was calling Foreman all kinds of names. Any name of ugliness you can think of. He fought just like a, your initial bump, just lay on the rope and take it with it. This time, he did it with character. He said, hey, I'm going to weather this stone. The rope of dope uh, was something that was invented by Muhammad Ali that night. I must say, I don't understand those tactics, Joe, staying on the ropes and letting him hit It just shows you the power of intellect and intelligence and how that can compete against anything. 
And believe me, I was a big, powerful giant in the ring with Mohammed. I mean, a knockout on him. He stood up to me. Mohammed setting him up against the wall. What a... Look at him. Putting in the ear of Mohammed. George Foreman, so young, so strong. Not supposed to do. Leaning up against the ropes. Four punches downstairs on Ali. So fearless. I had him beat. I really did. And really thought I had him beat up in the body, had him tired. Continues to talk, continues. Against George Foreman, he does away with his opponents, one after another, in less than three rounds. George not going that type of distance a long time. He was treading in water, you know, never been in before. This is the furthest that George Foreman has gone in a fight since 1972. Misses the right hand. Ali is definitely confusing him. Missing the shots that he missed, it drained him. Look at Foreman's face, he does look tired. Nobody knew the strength of Muhammad Ali. He was manhandling him, just like Archie said, grabbing him, and he emptied the guy's tank. I was afraid he was going to get killed by a George Foreman that many of our young viewers don't know. Boom, perfect timing. He was hurt. I thought his body was hurt. He came back. He hit one with everything, and he winked at me. Oh, yes, there's oh. no doubt about it. He winked right over here to this corner. You know, the guy really was the people's choice, and he was the people's choice because he loved them. Yes, I hate to predict it, any fight, but my goodness, those people who said Foreman would win in a flash have certainly been proved wrong. And about this. Seventh round, he asked me, that all you got, George? That, that was like a nightmare. After a while, even the dumbest of us looked up there and said, you know what? He's winning. So.